everybody it's Catherine and we're here on a Thursday and uh, a bit of a process video today I said that we'd be making uh, some Christmas paper homemade paper and it doesn't have to be for Christmas you know it, you can uh, customize it to anything that you want really uh, to whatever project uh, or journal that you're making but uh, out seeing as we're working our way through some Christmas ephemera um, to get the journals finished and packed off um, I want to concentrate on reds and bits of green for the Christmas colours um, so what we've got uh, I was just nearly used I nearly said the ingredients we need for this but you, the supplies that's the word I'm thinking of not the ingredients <laughs> although we have got some lovely tea here so I suppose that's the ingredient um, so I usually I mean you can use uh, any sort of backing really because this is going to be peeled off but I find that freezer paper and I use Reynolds freezer paper you get a great big roll for about five pound it is it is um, widely used for paper piecing because you can actually temporarily iron um, the plastic it's got a plastic coating but for this it's great because you, you, your handmade paper will stick to it <coughs> I always start coughing don't I when I'm filming so um, big piece of, of freezer paper or whatever as as a easy backing then um, I'll show you my finished thing in a minute just got three big sheets of that book that I ripped up that old map, map book with a loads of Napoleonic battles etc on it which I wouldn't use um, as my paper now you can use cheap copy paper um have you that's all i've used in in this project um <clears throat> but i wanted to see uh if uh, what it'd be like if i used a bit thicker paper and and today also i'm using a i'm going to make a bit of a masterboard um homemade paper masterboard which i don't often do it this way i usually will do an a4 um, US or US letter size you know with the equivalent copy paper <coughs> excuse me um, but I'm conscious of the layers drying today so part of the video I'll do um, and leave it to dry and then come back a bit later in the day so I can put the two bits together for you um, okay so I've got some watered down mod podge um, but you can have watered down uh, PV glue and I've got some petals, red petals and things out of the, my garden. Um, some bits of fuchsia there and beautiful uh, petals from uh, my hydrangea. Hydrangea in the back garden is very red. The one in the front, obviously, it depends how acidic your soil is. If you're a gardener, you'll know. Um, uh, there's a lot more pinks and greens to the front one in the front garden okay now we need some uh, plies of napkin and generally speaking your napkins will more often than not will come as three ply so you get your full image of your napkin which I haven't got here because I've already peeled them you'll get a front image then the next ply and this is what we're looking out for because if you're lucky so I just left this to peel off so third the third ply is this ordinary tissue this is uh, not tearing off like I wanted to I usually get a bit of sellotape in the corner and tear it off but it's been it's uh, been awkward today you know you've heard it all before it's awkward when we're doing it on camera never goes look well, never goes right but it doesn't matter because it's all going to be made into extra paper anyway so you peel your layers off so we can't use you've got to be very careful about about using whole sheets of um, napkins because of the copyright images on the napkins so you need to check that out however what I love and uh, I don't know if you can see it on camera see if I put it behind the white that'd be better than that cream 
often you will end up with a bit of an imprint now it's not in your face and overly obvious what it is so you know you're okay with copyright but you're getting a little glimpse of an image of things and this has got Christmas birds on this particular one and also I love the fact it's got some red on there and because I'm wanting to make it reddish hues for this paper and uh, so I've got a couple of those which is uh, this one here is not is not off its second layer so I'm just going to get a bit of sellotape and uh, peel it off crack it sellotape always sticks don't it when you want to use it okay so basically I just go in the corner I mean some don't like doing this because if you go you know they want it to be a perfect square for some detailed work then you have to you know take ages faffing about trying to split it but this is how I do it you just have to do it very very carefully look because it does rip easily I've cut my thumb this morning trying to rescue some, some a piece of clothing that fell down the radiator and it caught my finger right peel it peel it there's something quite satisfying about peeling napkins in <laughs> I just uh, it's very relaxing so you know if you just stick if you just want a, a little de-stress get a few of your napkins out and start uh, splitting them for when you need to do such as this now look it's plain silly devils on the last bit More often than not, I'll peel them all off in one, but you know, you can bet your bottom dollar it won't for the camera look. But it doesn't matter because this is, this is going to be used. So can you see, we've got two good sheets now of the, with the red imprint. And then I've got this one, which had got robins on. So vaguely you can see the robins. And then I've got the ordinary paper here which is the third ply so you want a stash of that and uh, you can see you know what that's going to be like okay so I'm just going to show you um, the project I made with my last piece of, uh, of handmade paper and um, I've made it into a lovely um, like envelope bag to put a few bits and bobs in and uh, I've got some uh, seam binding I've got a lovely little angel wing because I think that's relevant you know for this time of year <coughs> excuse me David could I have a glass of water please yeah. I've got a frog in my throat very very dry it's freezing cold the raining and dry and a lovely faceted bead on there so that just unties round there now this itself you can see like the inner workings the inner workings of the paper and I don't know if you can see on here but it has got a little bit of the leaf from the the uh, napkin showing and then on the back uh, there's all sorts in here little threads and things now the thing you have to be careful with this is uh, I've got some lemon lemon verbena and rose petal tea or something it's like a sleep tea that you you, you know you steep and um, last time I used it I put all the bits of lemon verbena in now that's fine it does give it a textured finish but um, you know you just have to be a bit careful if you wasn't necessarily the look I wanted um, although it's turned out nicely and um, and then inside I've sort of just put a couple of, couple of journaling cards and one of my little scrappy notebooks and uh, yeah how nice is that for a gift and no two pieces of handmade paper are the same are they so thank you so that's the sort of thing that we can make there's, there's endless possibilities okay so let's get going i have put my brush here 
sorry if I'm leaning now and the thing with having the um, Mod Podge not the Mod Podge sorry the plastic backing is that you know it's uh, if if this soaks through then you know you've got a plastic back in there so um, so I'm just don't want it over wet or else it'll be a soggy mess it'll be a cold soggy mess not hot mess and uh, I'm trying to keep these close together because it's going to be joined and I've got the paper held down with all sorts <laughs> jugs and jars and right okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to layer this first paper down because otherwise it's going to be getting on the nerves so let's just put that there let's just lay some paper on and just smooth it out doesn't matter if it's wrinkled and that actually adds to the the effect <clears throat> so hope you're all doing well hope you're managing to uh, to have some fun crafting this week it's uh, it's made me realize appreciate retirement more I think uh, these last six months I think I've said that before but yeah I'm really appreciating having the time to do so much crafting I just used to make cards when the boys were little and uh, I think this is going to take some covering perhaps it wasn't a good choice using using these maps it's because I'm used to using plain paper perhaps it's going to take a bit of covering You don't want it too wet because obviously if it's too wet it's just going to be uh, defeating the object it's not going to it's going to take forever to dry and uh, you know it might not be as smooth as you'd want it to be so let's put that in there Sorry I'm not talking too much today guys, I'm trying to concentrate. Now can you see, you've got to be careful. Or else it uh, just disintegrates as paper does. I mean there's loads of different methods, loads of different methods. And uh, this week I've watched a lovely video by APG Jamie. Um, she's got a channel she's one of my subscribers and uh, she's doing making uh, paper in a different way really enjoyed watching that that video Jamie so um, go and have a look at that so that gives you some different ideas um, I have been on the paper making course with uh, uh, someone here in Scarborough that has a big studio and uh, but that's oh that's a messy business when you're faffing about in buckets and scrunching all sorts of you're shredding it and you know you shred all your paper and pulverize it to to pulp right down to pulp and oh it's a bit of a a bit of a messy time but you can get some good results right have we got any more plain might end up having to have some more we don't want sellotape on it do we there we go so this is a thing uh, I've learned something really today that if you're wanting to do things quickly with not so many layers then using this thick paper with a load of print on it doesn't really work does it <clears throat> it'll get there in the end but uh, yeah I've got time 
today. Look, you see, I'm trying to end up in a mosh if you try to rush it. That on there. That up a touch. No, I don't move it, it might collapse. Just have to wipe this off afterwards. Right, I'm going to lay a whole sheet down now and I'm just going to see if it, how much sticks just by doing a dry brush. Hope you can see this. Sorry, I'm doing. Uh, So obviously you do a dry brush but you can see there's not too much excess on here um, so we'll just have a, a touch of that So I'll use the rest of this map book. I think I'm doing big master collage boards. Let's turn that up. Use every scrap. Now you can see some of the red is, you know, leaking out of this, this piece of napkin. To be careful, um, you know, that you don't get too much air in it. Just just gently work away at smoothing out. You can see where the air bubbles are, where it's not being glued down enough. And it's just a matter of, you know, being patient and, uh, which, you know, <laughs> not my strongest virtue, being patient. Not in the craft world anyway. Patient at work, exceptionally patient with people. At home, I'm very impatient. I'm one of those that if David's decorated, I've, you know, paint's not dry before I'm wanting to put the paintings back up. <laughs> yeah. And he's very, he's very patient and, you know, wants everything to dry to its nth degree. So, yeah. <laughs> I have to... Uh, I have to learn patience, which isn't a bad thing, is it? Patience is a virtue, this they always used to say when we were children. Right, let's wrap this up and see what else we could do at this side. It may well be that I'll have to leave this for a bit to dry because I think we're going to need a lot more layers than I anticipated. And I think then I'm going to go to full, uh, a full, a thicker solution of Mod Podge. I think. So while I'm just sticking this down, I don't have to concentrate too much on this bit. Um, I've, you know, I've started to see some of the slow stitch projects coming together, which is lovely. Um, so if you don't have Instagram, um, I'm, uh, you know, if you uh, hashtag me in Catherine underscore Pinkett at Catherine underscore Pinkett, Pinkett on uh, Instagram and um or if you don't have instagram i mean i'm rubbish at it i'm rubbish at social media trying to keep up with it all i mean all the lovely groups that i'm in for crafting you know i wish i could be on there more and welcome people and say things but <sighs> i've all on doing this crafting now and keeping up with the shop 
and and reading and my book you know and my booktube channel because I don't want to uh, let that go astray um, yeah so you can always send an email uh, I'll leave it down below dotty dot p at hotmail dot co dot uk and um, send me some photos of what because it may be that if you send me some photos of your slow stitch work then uh, David could do a bit of a montage of what we're all doing to flick through can I? Yeah. Oh, hello. You just turned up. Mm. I'm giving you work. Yeah. Well, I did retire, but now I work for the wife. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, look, he's at it again. Have you noticed? Poor badly done to husband at it again. I'm going to ban him. I'm going to ban him from coming. <laughs> he's going to make out his badly done to. Far from it. Right, now I'm going to turn the camera off now and we'll let that dry because there's nothing much more I can do because as I say it's, uh, it's uh, still showing through far too much. So I'm going to leave that to dry. I'm going to swap this for the uh, normal Mod Podge for the next layers because I think this isn't, uh, isn't working with the thickness of paper we've got. And uh, yeah, I'll be back. Okay then I'm back. It's not fully dried but it's better than it was. So I've got some thicker Mod Podge. So what I've used is some matte Mod Podge and I've got this and I wanted to use it. It's, I've had it a couple of years and it's it's Enjoy. the Sparkle Sparkle Mod Podge. So I've done a mixture of the two there seeing as it's Christmas. Um, I don't know what the heck I'm going to do. I'm going to have to cover the back when it's done with um, something plain so for you know or something different because I never thought that using this thick paper it didn't enter my head that I don't want the back looking like near, near uh, Neapolitan <laughs> Napoleon's conquest either so uh, yeah right I'm just going to because it's a bit of the thin side I've been over it all uh, off camera and smoothed out the air bubbles so now I'm just going to uh, you can see it's a lot a lot thicker now I can use the thicker it's no good using the thick to start with because the paper's just too fragile at the beginning I mean you don't have to use the thicker you can keep your, your uh, You can keep your thinned out stuff if you want. I've just been watching. I've just been watching Melanie Sullivan's craft room tour for goodness knows how many times. She's got such an amazing craft room and everything's sewing and, and then she's got an art room as well. And uh, you know, when I want a bit of cheering up, <laughs> inspiration of cheering up or a bit of escapism, I go and watch this video. <laughs> I think I once I once left her a comment. I should probably I don't know if she remembers. I left a comment saying, you know, when I need cheering up, I just watch your craft room tour. Uh, the stuff she's got, because obviously she had got a career. You know, she's had a career in uh, design and uh, quilting, and uh, um, you know, I think she used to have a really good job um, designing you know for big fashion houses or whatever so she's got everything uh, you could wish for stuff she collects you know vintage notions and everything uh, which is amazing it's just great to watch so I've um, yeah while it's been drying I've been getting a fix of Melanie's craft room <laughs> right now let's let's put down some some red again here I 
you need to be a bit ventilated when you're doing this the room because it's a bit bit smelly now this has still got quite a bit of the pattern on it hasn't it but uh, you know by the time we've put some other bits on it won't be but just uh, right let me just quickly get this side done so that um, we'll get some red over this side I'm hoping you can see it's all right using the thicker but it soon uh, it soon goes down the pot talking guys I'm concentrating right I've got another big piece of red there and I've got a bit there so let's uh, let's batten all that down now batten I don't know why I said that I was thinking of batten the hatches it's because it's so windy outside and I hope you're all keeping safe. I know there's certain areas in America that's having uh, really awful uh, storms and uh, I don't know if it's a hurricane or whatever. So, uh, you know, keep yourself safe. We can't envisage in some ways, we can't envisage it, I don't think, in the UK because, you know, we get high winds just over 100 mile an hour and we think they're strong. Or 120 perhaps you know we, we we're very fortunate that we don't get hurricanes um, so when we moan about the wind we haven't really got a clue have we hey right just now the other thing as well that I like to uh, use uh, Mod Podge is you do get quite a protective layer then on your paper you know it uh, it does sort of give an element of waterproofing I mean if this was going to be a journal cover for example the top layer then I do like to use the uh, the Ranger uh, collage medium Be careful you don't end up glue sniffing, don't you? <laughs> and I'm liking this red background, you know, it's uh, this is exactly what I really was looking. Uh, you see, I've got to be a bit careful, it's going a bit pappy in the middle there. Um, yeah, this is sort of what I was hoping would happen. Um, you know because we're using it in my Christmas journals this is the sort of effect that I wanted with the red behind so that's working just got to be a bit careful here do more of a dry brush now The important thing is that you know you get your air bubbles out you flatten your air bubbles at some time even if you wait till it dries and you know when they're more obvious where the air bubbles are and then you know slowly go over them with you with your stuff push that on there a bit it's fun I hope you have a go mind you I mean probably you know I'm not uh, some of you are already have been doing this and you'll have found other ways of doing it and you know probably a lot more expert than I am <laughs> but I just find it fun I love it okay let me just uh, move that paper in there so that thickens that edge <laughs> I 
Right. Okay then, now I'm going to start putting a few petals and bits of tea on it. So let's have a let's have a sprinkle about. You can give it a bit of a I don't want any chunks in this, so if I find any lemon lemon I shall fish them out because I don't want anything too bulky. <laughs> I threw it like that and it's all gone early. All over. Oh, this is such fun. I'm enjoying this. Throw that on there. Last of my tea. Oh, bit of lemon. Don't want that. And uh, yeah, I've got a few bits of thread here. I don't want the really thick ones. I give one of my throws in the bedroom a haircut <laughs> yesterday because you know what it's like they get they start getting pilled don't they some of these uh, you know woolly flat throws and uh, ever so often you have to go around and give it a bit of a a bit of a trim but I don't want the thick pieces just the small bits and of course you can you know this is again where all right. keep telling you to keep your fibres and bits and bobs that you cut off your threads got a bit more red there bit of red thread there that's a bit much, I don't want it to be taking over I'll just have a bit of a snip there a bit there Okay, then we'll start laying some of these uh, petals down. I think I love hydrangeas. I think they're such a pretty, beautiful flower. I really do. And when they're dried, I've, I've, somehow the front garden, they've really dried a beautiful, like, green like a greeny browny colour and uh, yeah I've got them in a vase in the lounge and they look, look beautiful but you have to keep watering them that's the uh, you know that is the trick they do need that's because they're called hydrangea which means hy hydra and, and you know that gives you the clue I suppose that they need a lot of water uh, to keep them going and uh, yeah now I notice across the road from us they've got to in their front garden totally different so of course again it's according to the soil how acidic or alkaline your soil is but theirs never get a deal of colour in the very very pale um, so I think you know I'm no expert gardener but I think there are nutrients you can put in the soil to enrich the colour that you get of your leaves by altering you know that acidity quite clever really mother nature is really clever right think we've about used all our so the camera went a bit dodgy so it's missed a bit so we've used all the mod podge out of there and then basically all I've done is I've just spread uh, my uh, verbena and uh, lemon uh, tea over it and then some of my petals out the garden okay and then now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a clear layer on top and uh, thank you David and then just uh, just dry brush it that's a good idea David that's a good idea pat it down for a bit be yes. easier here's the juices don't you darling wow. oh no 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 that's yeah, why exactly exactly can you see can you see the sparkle in that mod podge right never mind we've we've ripped a bit there but that's great because I can show you what to do 
So we get a little bit and we just put it over the top. Right, I'm not patting it anymore because it sticks to your hand. So trying to do it, look, trying to be quick. Thought we'd got a good way there, but... Uh, And there he goes. There he goes. Before lockdown, before we had the lockdown in March, you see, because it's a cul-de-sac really, that you can walk through to, there's a big playing field at the back of us, so you can walk through uh, the end of here. Don't like, look at that big chunk of stuff. And, uh, you know, you could get to it in many other ways and nobody used to come down here. Um, but since since uh, lockdown, a lot of people have discovered, I think, probably people that have lived here years, but, you know, it's the same as anything. If you're not going walking around your neighbourhood, if, you know, you normally go everywhere by your car and because we're only allowed to walk locally, I think people have found our road and... Uh, so now everybody and the grandmothers walk in the dogs. Ouch. That's a bit... Uh, I don't think I've much left in here of this. Oh, so it's a bit gloopy. It's because it's getting old now. Um, yeah, so everybody now seems to come this way. Or come back this way, walk in the dogs. So that doesn't help, does it? That sets him off all the more. Because he's, he's, you know, in charge of his house. I mean, he doesn't bark at dogs when he's out. He's all daft wanting to play. Um, but I suppose they're just guarding their territory, aren't they? A bit there. Oh, it does this. You, you will find that if you've got bigger pieces... And I'm going to go back, actually. I'm going to put a bit of this in. I've got jars with stuff all over the place, look. I'm just going to thin it down a little bit with the stuff I've got in there. Because I don't think, at the minute now, I don't need it. I need it a bit thinner, I think. Right, that's better. That's better. We'll have a bit on there. I'll be running out of time. There's trouble with stopping and starting. You don't know how long you've uh, how long you've been doing. You you're filming. So really, that is that is it. Um, just keep building your layers up till you've got enough. I've obviously got to do something with back layer and uh, yeah just keep coming back and getting rid of the the bubbles and just be gentle and work your way with it so that's all that I'm going to really be doing now um, I'll come back when we do wrap up tomorrow I'll show it you'll have dried by then I mean yeah I can get I can get the heat tool out and speed it all up but there's no need really and I think I've come about end of my time anyway so so um, yeah hope you've enjoyed that let me know if you're going to have a go or if you already uh, very experienced at making your own paper and uh, yeah let me know down below and uh, you know we can all look at different ways of doing it and learn from each other the other great person to go and I don't think I've mentioned Carol Tinson before but Carol um, she's a lovely crafter and she lives in York which 30 miles away from us 30 odd miles 40 is it I've, I've never I've never met Carol but she's lovely and she's a you know she she has done teaching and things in the past so she's she does great uh, art and paper crafting uh, go and check her out because she has videos on making your own paper and stuff as well so um, she's somebody that's really in inspiring so there we go guys thank you for joining me today um, I've had a lovely time um, messing about with this 
don't forget to like and subscribe we need those subscribers please so tell your friends about the channel if you're enjoying it and i'll see you tomorrow for a wrap up and a little tease david's about finished his his christmas digital kit and it's it's looking good to say we don't know anything about these sorts of things and uh, yeah it's been a crash course for him for him from our from my son joe um i think you're gonna like them all right then see you tomorrow stay safe bye for now